let's talk about the pizza restaurant problem. So I have a data set from some pizza restaurant. It's a large chain. Four variables were measured in the survey that we're going to use in this problem. So the first variable is question 11 that we're going to be using today. So Q11 asks the respondent, do you intend to return? So will you come back to this restaurant? The values for this variable, if we go look at this data set, if I do a table, it's called pizza rest dollar Q11, you notice it takes two values, one and two. Now one means yes, two means no. That's going to be a little bit of a problem for us because what um, R expects is that one should be yes and zero should be no. So we're going to have to solve that by taking, if you take two minus a variable that is one, two, notice you get a zero, one variable. Okay, so we have most of the people saying, yes, I intend to come back. There's a couple that don't want to come back. The other three variables that were measured were satisfaction levels with the food, the atmosphere, and the service. These were all measured on five-point scales, where five means very satisfied, one means very dissatisfied, and you can fill in the values in between. So let's fit a regression, a logistic regression, since the outcome only takes two possible values. Uh, so we want to predict whether or not a person comes back based on their satisfaction with those three dimensions. You can think about this being a resource allocation problem where if this pizza chain wants to improve on loyalty, I want customers to come back, uh, where should I put my money? Well, I guess I could put it into having better food. I could put it into having you know better atmosphere in the restaurants or I could put it into my servers. Uh, which of these factors where I could put my money is going to give me the biggest bang for, for my buck, if you will. So in terms of increasing the probability that someone wants to come back. All right, so we'll use a, a you know GLM again. I'm going to take 2 minus the dependent variable. The reason for that again is 1 has to mean yes, 0 has to mean no. The data came to us in a form that uh, wasn't that way. So the 2 minus fixes that. Equation looks pretty much the same as what you're used to. List all your predictor variables separated by operators on the right-hand side of the tilde. We want a logistic regression. So what that means is I want binomial errors. Along with binomial errors, we get um, the logit function. Then we're going to use the pizza rest data set. All right, so here's the summary of this object. First thing we should probably do is to state the estimated regression equation. We need to interpret the parameters. Which ones are significant? So let's go back to Word here, where I can easily type uh, these things in. So my estimated regression e equation is going to be something like this. If pi is equal to the, that should be a lowercase pi, um, probability that a customer intends to return. Now my dependent variable is going to be the log of pi all over, so over, 1 minus pi. And it'll be minus 2.40 plus 1 point, we'll just call that 1.4 times food minus 0.13 times atmosphere, uh, plus, let's just call that 0 0.40 times service. So that's my estimated regression equation. Now we're, we're asked to interpret these coefficients. Uh, which ones are significant? All right, so a positive value of 1.4 for food means this. For every additional increase in, on the food scale, so if, if, um, if I could increase the average satisfaction from, say, 3.5 to 4.5, that's a unit increase in food. So a unit increase in food 
is associated with a change in the log odds ratio of 1.4. So if I increase food by a unit, satisfaction with food by a unit, my log odds go up by 1.4. Now remember, there's a strictly monotonic relationship between the log odds and the probability. So what that means to me is, if people are happier with my food, they're more likely to come back. The probability that they come back gets bigger. Now, uh, we might want to test whether that's different from zero. So we could do that with H naught beta one equal to zero, so food it's called satisfaction with food, has no effect. Against the alternative, the beta 1 is not equal to 0. And my p-value down here is absolutely tiny. It's uh, about 10 to the minus 16th. So the p is, is way less than 0. So 2 times 10 to the minus 16th which is way, way, way less than 0.05, so reject H0. Conclude that food matters. Now, the coefficient for atmosphere should bother you. It's negative, so what that means is the happy, you know, the more satisfied customers are with the atmosphere, the lower the log odds and thus the lower the probability. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Um, What's probably going on here is multicollinearity. And we could actually test for that. Let's go do that. Um, if I do fit equals GLM, 2 minus Q11 tilde food plus atmosphere. Is that what I did? A MOS pH, and then third variable service, binomial. And this was pizza rest. Now, if I do a library car, I get my uh, VIFs. And so what you'll see is they're not terrible, but they are greater than one. I, I think I have, um, you know, some multicollinearity here. And, you know, so, so this smells like a sign flip. Let's see, just for, um, just to check this, I'm going to do fit two. Let's get rid of food and app, uh, food and service. And I suspect that we're going to find that service now has a positive coefficient. And sure enough, it does. So notice we have a sign flip. Sign flips are a classic symptom of multicollinearity. All right, luckily this thing isn't different from zero. Um, so essentially my conclusion is it's plausible that atmosphere has no effect on whether or not a customer comes back. So satisfaction with atmosphere is not very important here, I guess, you know, at least within the range. I mean, if we let all the restaurants um, deteriorate to be you know, horrible looking, then atmosphere might matter. But I guess all the restaurants are pretty decent right now, and so it's not an issue. Um, okay, as for service, we have another coefficient that is about 0.4. So the magnitude is substantially less than that for food. So I'll conclude that service is less important than food, but notice it is significant. So that's, that's the interpretation. Now let's move on to odds ratios. Instead of interpreting these betas, what we'll often do is interpret e to the beta. Okay, so here were, were the coefficients for the pizza restaurant problem. If I um, exponentiate them, so just take e to those values, I get the following. Okay, so food has an exp beta of, of four. Now what does this mean? So the odds ratios describe the multiplicative effect on the odds, not on the odds ratio, on the, on the log odds, but on the odds. All right, so, so consider two people. Let's say person one has um, scores of four for each of my coefficients. So x1 
for food is 4, x2 atmosphere is 4, x3 is 4. Person 2 is identical to person 1 in every respect except the food. So person 2 likes the food a little bit more. Now let's look at the odds for person 1. So the odds for person 1 are simply going to be E, to, you know, whatever my intercept was times 4. So 4 is this right here, times beta 1 plus, okay, 4 times beta 2 and 4 times beta 3. What are the odds for person 2? Well, here are the odds for person 2. It's going to be exactly the same thing except there's a 5. Now, I'm going to rewrite this 5 in two parts. So 5 beta 1 is the same thing as 4 beta 1 plus another beta 1. Now remember when you have um, a sum in an exponent, if you bring something out of the exponent, it, it gets multiplied. Okay, so I want to bring this beta 1 out of the exponent. So that's this part. That's e to the beta 1. Now look what I have here. This expression is exactly equal to the odds for person 1. Okay, so what that means is the odds for person 2 are just the odds for person 1 times e to the beta 1. Now, we go back and look at this. e to the beta 1 is 4. So the interpretation is for every unit increase in food, the odds are multiplied by 4. So in other words, person one, or person two is the odds that person two comes back are four times the odds of person one. Now if I had an additional person who had, say, food equal to three, atmosphere four, service four, um, then the odds that person five would come back would be 16 times the odds that that person who had food equal to three would come back. Okay, so these odds ratios are um, often used instead of the raw betas. Uh, that's a good place to stop.